Yeah. Uh, so yeah, today is the the final session of the what they forgot to teach you about uh, our book mm -hmm. club. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it has been a journey. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy, I'm happy that we have, have reached this stage. Yeah. Uh, it's my first book club to finish, so it's a special thing to me. Yeah. So yeah. I, I wanted to start with asking you: Do you have any uh, experience with targets? No, I don't. But I have been wanting to learn about this for a long yeah. time now. So yeah, that's why I didn't want to miss this. <laughs> Good. Yeah. So for me, the this is why I I uh, chose to give this session because mm -hmm. I wanted to learn more about it. So I forced myself by just giving this session about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you already know, it's, it's not part of the book. So we added this extra chapter uh, because it was something related, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not actually a part of the book. But as you can see here that uh, because uh, targets and many other tools, they fall under this umbrella of uh, reproducibility. So mm -hmm. I found this very useful book. It's called uh, Reproducible Analytical Pipelines, Masters of Data Science. Mm -hmm. And I will make sure to share it on the Slack channel. And okay. I, I relied on the targets chapter. So they have a chapter on different uh, reproducibility tools. And mm -hmm. they also cover targets. And in this chapter, they cover uh, not targets per se, but they cover uh, targets and RENV. So are you? OK. Yeah, yeah. RENV, I'm familiar with that. Yeah. So here they cover how to how using both of them at the same time give you a lot of power. But I, I wouldn't be discussing RENV anyway. But I will uh, heavily rely on this chapter when we discuss targets today. So, sure. yeah. Maybe let's start by I uh, will use this the white space here. Uh, so like so targets is is uh, is an R package that is used for making pipeline. So what is a pipeline? So literally like the pipeline would, you will have uh, the pipe. So in the literal sense, and in this pipe, uh, if, if it is a, it's a pouring pipe, it will get an input. And then maybe this, the, the input would be the triangle. And then it will be still a triangle, but this is not an interesting pipe. This means that the this is like a hollow pipe. There is nothing interesting there. So mm -hmm. the computational pipelines are more interesting than this. So usually you will take one object that has some features and you do some pre-processing. So let's uh, keep this. Yeah. So you start with one object. Let's say it's a circle and then you apply a function you process the data, the input, and then the output would be something different. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and simply what you can see here that the, we have three elements, the input, the output, and the function, the, the processing or the action, which in, in data science we have in the form of functions. And this, these are not separate. So each, they are interdependent. So the output depends both on the input data and the function, right? And usually when you are uh, dealing with the data science project, you have to keep track of everything. So for example, if you updated the function, you can't keep the output as is, right? So you will have mm -hmm. to update the output, but do you need to update the, the, the input or something? This is not the case because you don't need to update the input. You don't need to reload the data or something like this. Uh, at the same time, if you maybe, did, did some data wrangling on the input to make it easier to deal with. And now you would like to use this input for the pipeline. Uh, but this would mean that the output that you already had is obsolete. Yeah, because the input is has changed, but the mm -hmm. function is as is. So you don't need to reload the function script. So what targets does is that it tries to take the burden the mental burden of keeping track of the different parts of the pipeline off the shoulder of the data scientist. And they can keep track of all of these parts so that the oh. data scientist would care about engineering the pipeline, making sure that things are connected 
And then once you put uh, this pipeline under the target framework, then targets can keep track of everything. It can keep track of the output, whether it's up to date, the functions and the input. Interesting. Okay. At least this is how, how I understand it. Yeah, no, uh, that's, that's really interesting. Let's, yeah. let's dive deeper. And I think that before targets, so, uh, there was an, another package called Drake. So, mm -hmm. so targets is, is the, is now like it, it, uh, it, it's it's Drake now. Look, no. So if you found a Drake, like you don't have to use it or to learn it for reproducibility, but rather so, uh, use targets. Uh, so I haven't used Drake before. But, uh, I, uh, like reproducibility has not been a a, a, a pressuring issue for me. Uh, but uh, recently, I've been interested in in reproducibility, and yeah. So this is why targets might be something that I need to add to my toolbox. So as I've said, like now I give you like an overview of targets. Uh, it's a framework for pipeline. Pipeline will have different objects. You could think of them as they fall into three categories, the output, the inputs, and the functions. The good thing about targets, why you would use it, because if you have a large uh, project and you would like to keep track or you were trying to put something into production and one of the team members updated part of the of the pipeline, you don't need to reload and rerun the whole pipeline, but you only need to run the part that has been changed and the things that depends on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so how does this, uh, how, what, what is it? So now we had a conceptual understanding of a pipeline, but how does it look like on the, in, uh, in data science in R? So yeah. now I'll move to R studio. Can you can you see our studio? Uh, Maybe I will try one more time. Uh, now, yeah, now, do you see it? Yes. Okay, great. So, uh, following the chapter in the book that I've uh, shown you, I I went through the code, the chapter, and I in in this process I made this uh, project. I call it first pipeline. It's like an introductory uh, project that uh, makes you more familiar with targets, but in a hands-on kind of fashion, yeah? So mm -hmm. a pipeline takes this form. So this is in, in your R project. So you, all you need is an R project. You need the targets library, and then you will need to add this uh, uh, underscore targets.r, okay? And this mm -hmm. is the, the, can you see it? The, yeah, I can see. Yeah, and this is the where the pipeline will be defined. And to define a pipeline, uh, this is how it looks like. So let me walk you through what we have here. So what we have here is that we, for the pipeline, we'll need to run functions. It's uh, one of the categories that we have discussed and functions comes with packages. So the first thing is that you will need to load the packages, but mm -hmm. maybe you will have some functions locally that you have uh, defined. So you will need to source those one, okay? So the first part is you will, uh, uh, source or load the packages for, in which your functions that you will be using live, okay? And after this, let's maybe I can remove all of this to simplify and then, yeah. Yeah, so this is uh, the first part. Uh, sorry. Okay, yeah. So now we know the, the function where they will be loaded, but now uh, what about the input and the output? So the way it, it works in targets is that you will define your pipeline as a list. So you okay. will use the, the function list mm -hmm. and then you will use from, from the package targets, you will use the function called tar, tar target, okay? Okay. So for, for if you could see here, you could, can you see my console? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you go to targets, you can see that you have all the function. They start with this tar something, tar something, tar something, okay? And here, the, the one that we will, you only need to learn or know a couple of them by heart. So you don't have to, to know all of them. But as you can see here, that the first one that we'll get to know is tar target. And mm -hmm. inside this function, 
you define the the input and the output and the functions that you will need to use. So what is happening here? So here I'm saying that I have a function called get data mm -hmm. that lives in this uh, a code it in this script. So here okay. this this is the script function dot r, and here mm -hmm. this is my my function called get data. Okay. okay. And it's, it's a very simple function because it's a tutorial. So all it does is that it doesn't even need to take any input, any arguments. It just loads a data set that is part of the package. So there is oh. a package called my package and it has a data set. And so one of your personal packages, I imagine, called Yeah, my so package. this was uh, part of also part of the chapter. So it was written by the author of the chapter. Mm -hmm. And he used it to to teach the examples on targets. Okay, so, and then unemployment is a data set in that package. So we are just yeah. reading. It. Can you when see? Bring, so it's like that load. Yeah, so it's yeah. like that load uh, statement, right? So when we load this, so whatever is going to be the output will now be saved as unemployment data based on that pipeline. Exactly, but it it will be uh, here. You will have the the package. So mm -hmm. here you, let's say you have an input, but the input is null. So the input here is null. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the first part of the three, the three parts of a pipeline. You have the input here, the input is null. The function that will process this input is get data. And then the output, we say that we need to, uh, we will assign it to uh, an object called unemployment data. Mm -hmm. okay. okay so yeah. this is how it works you will had the, we had the we had the input we had the output we had the function and we had the output uh, and the, these three parts are all defined within tar target mm -hmm. and this tar target because you can the your pipeline can be a complex and, and interconnected you define it all within a list okay okay so here in this pipeline what I have done, what I've de I've defined different parts. So the first part is I define this uh, tar target. Maybe I could, yeah, here. So the first part is that uh, I have the first output I have is the unemployment data, and I get this unemployment by using this function. And then another output is so tar target. The way it works is that you first define your output, the object to which the output of the function will be assigned. And this is another example. Here I have tar target. I say that I would like to use a function called clean unemployment. And again, so here it is defined uh, clean unemployment. Where is it defined? I think it's defined in my packages. So my packages, clean unemployment. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the function that I will be using. And because I've already uh, loaded my package, targets will, will easily find this function, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. I use clean, I use clean uh, uh, unemployment, and then I pass the, the arguments for this function. So here, can, as you can see here on the right, the function takes uh, uh, a data set, and then it takes uh, one, two arguments. Sorry, it takes uh, four arguments. The first is the data sets, and then you have like two columns names that you need and then the column of interest. So it's just like some arguments for this function. But here, yes. as you can see, uh, things now start to get interesting because now we are connecting the parts of the pipeline. So the output of the first pipeline, so here is now mm -hmm. the input of the function in the second part of the pipeline. Okay. Okay. And this is where things start to get uh, scalable. So you have defined an object based on this function, and now you can pass this object uh, to another function and get a different output. Mm, and okay. here, yeah, so here, for example, we have this, this in input output, and then we get a uh, different output. And now we have uh, a, a, an object called uh, this luxury, Luxembourg data. So here we take this data set and we subset the the entries that uh, belong to Luxembourg, something like this, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the rest so, of uh, the pipeline. As part of the def input definition, it is basically the input would always be that argu whatever arguments we need to pass to this function. Or uh, do you, is there also a situation where 
you know maybe you need to pass that input as uh, a, a next row in inside our target uh, so uh, like a row in in the a row in a data set you mean no like a row in for example third line 13 right that is your you're adding um a piece in your pipeline and you're saying tar target so then you start with saying the output name right the mm -hmm. lux data is going to be the output data frame mm -hmm. the, then followed by the function so i i'm wondering if uh, for some reason is is there a use case where maybe you have an input that is passed uh, after this clean unemployment function comma then that input name uh, uh, so maybe here you you mean like uh, make a pipe and then process mm -hmm. something like that yeah so I, I think this would still be possible but it's not a clear a clean way to do it because if you would like to do this it would be better to define it inside the function so you would edit yeah. the clean unemployment function mm -hmm. and make this pipe and further further pre-processing part of the function oh, okay so in a way this um sort of framework is forcing us to modularize everything and then yeah. you know like keeping the bare bones here so that we just make this call assign this move forward and take this into the next step and the next step yeah so the the so for example let, let's take what the, the the question that you have asked so can i add uh, a, a function that will take the output here and then pre -process, further pre-process it yeah uh, now that you this might have been your, the, the way you would deal with this before, but now that you know about targets, you would be, oh, but rather than doing this, I could take this uh, Lux data, which is now a data frame, and then I can define a new tar target. And using a, a smaller function, I could select only this row that I'm interested in. Yeah. So mm -hmm. instead of writing everything together in one big function, you could uh, make, maybe you would like your pipeline to be more readable, or you would like to maybe use this function that selects the row in a different uh, part of the pipeline. So you don't need to here maybe add here like filter based on a diff some, some condition. But as you can see, like here I selected Luxembourg and here I'll maybe select a different uh, country or a different city. Then I will need to copy this and put it here. And then I will copy it and put it here. Mm -hmm. So instead, making things, as you said, modular, and you can reproduce it in different parts of the pipeline. Got it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like here, like in, in, in this pipeline, you have like, I think there are major steps. So the first step is that you get the data with this function, and then uh, you pre-process the data and select some parts of interest that you will be using. So, and this results in three different objects. Lux, Luxembourg data, Canton data, and then commune data. And then after having these three packages, uh, sorry, three objects, uh, you visualize the data. And to visualize it, you pass the inputs, which were like the, the output from the, mm -hmm. the from the previous yeah. step as an yeah. input to a new function called makeplot. And here, yeah. makeplot is nothing but a ggplot wrapper function. Mm -hmm. that takes the data and plot it okay? okay but now what the the interesting thing is that because it's part of the targets pipeline if you change the output sorry if you change the input or if you change updated the function now when you look at the pipeline you can see and spot that the the output is now outdated and you need to update it so you can run the pipeline and the pipeline will run only the parts that would update the plots that you have locally Okay. okay, so is that something, uh, so maybe will will you show that example as well? Yeah, like, yeah okay. Perfect. Yeah, we'll have a look on this. And finally, uh, we save the output, the, the, the output uh, plots using this function. So mm -hmm. as you can see that it's, things are now interconnected. The output of one part is the input of a different part and everything is connected together. But how do we have been talking a lot? Uh, but let's make things more concrete by looking at uh, how the pipeline looks like. 
So mm -hmm. the interesting part of, of target is that you could actually uh, visualize the pipeline. So what you need to do is to target, I think it was tar viz network. Okay. Okay. So we have base level get data, and these are all the shapes you were talking about. Get yeah. Data, make, plot, make plot. So these are your functions from the function dot r script. Mm -hmm. This is from the package. These are your next level of data frames that are created, and then the plots are created. So um, how do you read this? So this is the flow of your pipeline. So th these are the levels. So. Uh... It, it's like a, it's the, the pipeline, but it's not ordered or something. I, I think that it's a, maybe there's some functionality that will allow you to disentangle this part, because as you can see that here, things are get very hairy and it's difficult to disentangle part, uh, things from each other. But uh, because you, you already have an idea about your pipeline, you could read it as follow. So you have the, the unemployment data that you get by, uh, using this function get data and because get data didn't take any input so you can see that there is no input to get data right mm -hmm. so get data doesn't take any input it just produces the unemployment data the unemployment data uh, we have this part that called uh, clean unemployment and uh, to mm -hmm. select Luxembourg Canton and this mm -hmm. is what we have here, the Canton data, the commune data, the LOX data. And as you yeah. can see, the name of the nodes are the name of the R objects that you have defined. Correct. Okay. And then you take this further to visualize it. And then the last thing that you would need to do is to save things locally. Yeah? And here we, you can see on the, on the right that you have a legend that tells you the status of each node or each part of this pipeline. So here you could see that all of them uh, are colored in this. Dark uh, green. Uh, I think yeah. you're, uh, did you re, uh, zoom that visual? Because that window is gone. Oh, so you, you can't see the, the, the network anymore? Yeah, and not anymore, yeah. I, I was able to see it earlier when it was in that bottom window, but then you uh, know. Uh, you maybe know. because I share the, so yeah, two, two. now I can see it. Now you can see it, right? So let's make it large, yeah. So here you can see on the right, you have this legend and the legend tells you the, so the different shapes are different parts uh, of the pipeline. Uh, what is the type of this object? And the color, here we have two color and you can mm -hmm. see that all of the, 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 the pipeline is up to date. What it means is that, uh, for example, let's see, how, what would happen if I go to uh, maybe a function, let's have make plot and I change the here, the, the title in this function. So maybe, uh, yeah, test. Okay, I save it. And then when I save it and look back at the network, Mm, you so can see that changed. yeah and so... but only the parts that was affected that is that are affected by uh, by the update okay so i've updated the make plot so you could see that make plot would affect the plots mm -hmm. but it doesn't have you don't have to reload the the input for example okay. yeah so the mm -hmm. the input and all the all the parts of the pipeline that comes before these steps are all up to date and the function, the, all the, the parts that are downstream to make plot are all now outdated. Yeah, makes okay. sense. Okay. And yeah. to, to, to make things now, to make things up to date, I think the function is to, it's called tar make. So I guess targets and then tar. Yeah, so here, tar make to run the pipeline, you define in target script file. So mm -hmm. I will give it a try. 
Let's see. Oh, sounds reasonable. Okay, uh, and here... I was thinking though, so this uh, make plot function and save plot, right? So, for example, for the make plot function, the input that goes into it is the data. Oh, okay, that's fine. So, because then Canton data at the top mm -hmm. uh, is feeding into Canton plot, and then make plot is also feeding into the Canton plot. So, yeah, uh, effectively. Um, so the, I mean, with with this current example, it doesn't uh, resonate with the same input goes into the function goes gives you the output that linear fashion. It, this is not how I see it anymore. But uh, it looks like okay, there is Canton data that feeds into, um, you know, into at at this level, uh, uh -huh. and then the make plot function also feeds in at that level, mm -hmm. and then you get Canton plot. Yeah, I see what's here. I see your point. So I, I think they are yeah, very synonymous. Like you could see it as a as the, the make plot to be an intermediate here, or you could see them as both as an input. Both arrows are going to the Canton plot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So w whichever the way, whichever way is is better for you to 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 understand the pipeline. But I, I wanted to grab your attention to the to the output that you get. Okay. In the console when you run target tar make okay. so here you can see that uh, you, you can see that we have some some parts of the pipeline that are skipped so okay. these parts are the unemployment data the canton data the luxembourg data and the commune data so these are all the parts that are upstream of make plot and then for the canton plot for all the plots and the save plot all of these parts have been re-updated so they have been rebuilt. Right. OK. Mm -hmm. And now when we look again one more time on the network of the pipeline. So now everything is up to date. Yes, perfect. OK. So for, for, for me, this is, uh, this is a, a powerful thing that I but because so the the way and uh, I understood it is that targets is um, made like make files. So I'm familiar with make files just from the name, but um, I don't deal with make files. I don't define make files. So if you have if if you are more familiar with make files and have experience with them, and also snake make for making pipelines in Python, uh, maybe this will also make it easier for you to understand targets. But because I didn't have any previous experience with those tools, uh, it's my first time to deal with this pipeline uh, uh, management tar, uh, package. Uh, so what what do you think? So do you think that you can you will benefit from using something like this or? Yeah, no, I think it definitely. So uh, I'll have to uh, think about how do I. Uh sort of bring this into my workflow because you mm -hmm. know we're not used to doing this but i can see the benefit of you know even in a in a project which is more than small enough right where mm -hmm. you have multiple function scripts where you are writing test scripts so a lot of times we do you know moving from one place to the other one function to the other and make changes and i i at least i know for i know myself that i do that a lot when uh, you know, I'll make some change and then I'll forget to, for example, I changed something in the function definition, right? Uh, at the time of development that happens all the time, right? And then, um, so that function, and so for example, I'll, I'll give you a situation what I'm working on right now. So I have uh, this code scripts that I'm, let's say three scripts in a project that I'm working on. Some of it, you know, at times is, um, related in the sense that you know they have some set of calculations that are happening and are, they're same i mean they, they can be different things like you know they're like they could be le different levels of aggregation happening um there could be some different uh calculations happening but uh in essence there is some something common between you know the data frames that are getting created in three different scripts so what i ended up doing you know, a few days back was I created a function and I, you know, removed all of those 
uh, like even if you you know think about like four or five lines of code that was being repeated maybe a, at least six times across these th three <laughs> scripts i moved it into a function now when i did that i was very happy that i you know this function is created but now i have to come back to my scripts and change the fun like you know those four lines need to be replaced with the function call correct now mm -hmm. Uh, while I'm making those changes, I also realize that you know there is this different level of aggregation in wherever they are being used. So maybe two places have same level of aggregation, but in the other script, two other pieces have absolutely different uh, need. So which made me think, okay, I need to add some grouping variable as an argument, and then you know I had to make um, some dynamic. Uh, like, like I had to let make the function accept that group by as a dynamic variable and you know whatnot. So which meant now testing in all uh, in all the free, the previous script that I had made and run successfully that I need it. So in in the lowest level, you know, it needed to have that new uh, argument values that I passed. Mm -hmm. In the previous case, it worked without any argument. So that was a simple use case. Mm -hmm maybe because I, I took that as the base for creating that function. So, you know, in, in if I use this, it basically just highlights it automatically and I don't run into errors before I see that. I see. Uh, yeah, and I think that the the this the, the the advantage of targets for me, it's it gets more pronounced when you are saving something or you're writing some to desk. So let me let me show you what I mean. So here, if you look at the, can can you still see our yeah, studio? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I see we had three save plot. Um, yeah. So here you can see that the thing, things are saved, right? But mm -hmm. let's say that I have maybe I have uh, updated parts of the pipeline that doesn't affect the the plots. This what when this happens, targets would not rewrite or re resave the object. So it, you have also like, so there's some caching going on, especially mm -hmm. if you are working with large object, the object of large size. This would mean that if you updated parts of the, of the pipeline, you don't have to run everything just to make sure that everything is updated because targets handle this for you. It keeps track of everything. So maybe for, for the sake of it, we could, maybe change yeah let's change one uh, data set and let's say i will how to change it yeah maybe here i will remove one of the counties i will save it i will have a look on the pipeline Here we can see that only the branch of the branch that is affected of the pipeline is this part. Mm -hmm. And now when I rebuild the pipeline, you can see here that the only plot that was saved, we have only plot or only one plot that was saved, yeah. uh, which is the one that belongs to the commune plot. But the other ones, the other uh, the other objects are not updated and this is very useful that you don't have to keep track of everything you don't have to go back and check the the caching of the objects and then mm -hmm. see whether you don't need to rewrite things and uh, just waste more time right, uh, right. Yeah. Uh, i was wondering though uh, on one of the things that so when we when we're defining those parts of the pipeline right how can this handle if you have, um, how do I say it? So maybe you have uh, some looping mechanism or a functional, uh, you know, setup in the sense that maybe I need to. So for example, within this data, right? What if uh, I wanted to automate this process of creating that county level data, right? Um, and then on each county, I want you to call the make fun make plot function and then save it. Right. So do you see what I'm saying? So this yeah. is this to me sounds like very much an automated um process where you know maybe I would filter the data for that county, you know, add a filters a statement, save this into something, and you know, maybe a function call of um 
maybe a new function that has this whole set of um you know bunch of items in between which includes the other function calls so maybe um i don't know let's let's call that function abc and where in i would do the i would take the input as a main data i would filter for each county whichever is given as an input to the function then mm -hmm. i would say make then you know pipe it to make plot pipe, pipe it to save plot mm -hmm. right that basically uh you know for example if i have five counties in my data it'll automatically run everything you know filtering and making and plotting so uh, when, when this is done running, it will give me five uh, county level plots. Mm -hmm. uh, but I so this I can do either in a for loop or I can write a per uh, map uh, per per walk uh, call function call for this. So how would that sort of you know uh, show up in in the targets pipeline? So uh, I don't I don't have I have never been in the, into such a situation, but the way I see it is that you could define a function that would achieve the output of interest. So mm -hmm. maybe you would add the loop or the l apply or the map functions within the fun within the function, and mm -hmm. then pass the input in a way that would make the pipeline. So the, 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 I think, as, as I've already mentioned before, for targets, now you are start to think about your pipeline as a whole, yeah? So mm -hmm. you're starting to think that, oh, if, if I did something uh, very lousy now, it would affect the pipeline and the readability of the whole pipeline. So yeah, instead, let's do this in a good practice and break things into functions and then pass output to input output to input kind of fashion mm -hmm. and in 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 the city in the scenario that you have just mentioned i think that the way would be to just it's it will be the same thing as this and then clean map maybe it's a, a function that depends on that has loop inside it of it mm -hmm. and then commune data would be an output list so this list will have uh, five data frames mm -hmm. that uh, or whatever the number of data frames based on the number of inputs or the number of counties that you pass, and mm -hmm. then the plot will handle this. Yeah, so you you keep you keep building the pipeline, but uh, in a, in a more manageable blocks. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. and I think that here, like as as a big fan of pipe, and a very I find myself sometimes a. Uh, yeah, I, I, I catch myself making very, very long pipes. So I I will take the, 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 the object, the data frame, and then I will keep doing 10 lines of piping, one part to the other in, and passing the output to, to, to from one line to the other. Mm -hmm. And the, the pipe is uh, still easy to read, especially with the tidy verse. Yeah functions which make it easier to read as functions and as as actions but still mm -hmm. sometimes it's too much so i overdo it so i make a very long pipe so maybe with, with the with the pipeline with the targets approach and this targets philosophy i would try to break this into more manageable parts mm -hmm. and define them in the function but this would also mean that what I wanted to discuss with you at, at the end or, or as we approach the end is, does this break the flow or not the flow of the pipeline? Like, as you see, it's one of the most powerful thing about this is that you could look at the your pipeline all at once and see how things flow in the pipeline. But I mean, mm -hmm. it breaks the thinking pro process because now you have to think about uh, everything uh, in separately and then combine them like think separately and then combine them which is not something that I'm, I'm used to yeah yeah no I was also thinking so in terms of um, like literally using targets so once you've defined the pipeline and with the when you change any of the elements in your pipeline whether it is you know maybe the input or the functions involved Mm -hmm. You need to come back and do the uh, make yeah. army uh, manually yourself, right? It, I mean, it, that's not one one of those automated parts where it just sees it and then it'll do it. So I think these two things will come very handy when you know you've made a change. 
you consciously make an effort to check the visual uh, network and then say okay so i i see that you know maybe these five things are outdated or this one thing is outdated and then yeah. you say okay, let's uh, run the make function and then basically it'll update that outdated piece only for you yeah and if, if nothing is updated and you run tar make you see it yeah, basically not update anything it'll just exactly yeah tell you everything is skipped yeah so uh, it, it, it's it's really it's really nice i i think that maybe i need to but the only parts that i uh i'm still wondering whether it is a, a, a feature it's an advantage or a disadvantage is this uh the thinking flow the flow of the thinking uh, mm -hmm. but maybe, maybe i'm trying to nitpick or something <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah no i think this definitely this definitely is useful and um yeah and i think it's not complicated i i don't know why i have for so long heard about it and i'm like i wanted to learn you know try to read about it but i've never managed to because it just felt so scary that oh my yeah. god it's going to change of workflow i think that 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 was the sort of uh, unspoken fear behind it yeah and, and also to be honest useful. it's it's not an attractive part of the analysis this pipeline and reproducibility so it's not like something that has to do with modeling data or visualizing data or something that you would see that the effect it would maybe improve your your your, your product or improve the the output of the analysis but it just yeah. it it tries to keep things as is so it's inherently a boring thing <laughs> yeah yeah no but then when when it comes to talking about things in production right so then uh, it saves you a lot of uh, potential insanity if yeah. you can keep things in check right so for yeah. for production level work it definitely is something to to learn and you know to uh, to extensively use i would say because yeah, yeah. And, and the the bigger your project grows these things you know, like I was saying, so when you when you have one project, one function, it, it has, but there are so many objects that are dependent on it. You make one change and it can break so many of them. And then you're like fumbling as to where you need to go fix things unless you, you know, you're, you're manually running those pipelines and running all those different scripts and having them fail at one point or the other. And when you then you make make a fix to handle that situation and it feels somewhere else and then you know like after a few iterations you start to get crazy yeah i've i've, I've honestly i've been in a situation where i went to the meeting and then i shared some output with my collaborators and only after the meeting that i've noticed that oh this is not the the last version this is not the updated <laughs> this is version the most updated one yeah, so I have I updated the code, but I didn't I didn't update the output, or maybe even worse, to update some of it and not update the rest. So, okay. yeah, and this is the the this is a very it's it's not quite common, but when it happens, it's it seems like it should have been something very avoidable. But yeah, it's because you as a data scientist, uh, like you still carry this burden of keeping track of things. So mm -hmm. now as as a modern data scientist you shouldn't care about this anymore with the piping yeah and yeah. leave and, this and one of the things i think one, one smaller scale uh product for uh, uh, that i use for reproducibility though is our markdowns so you know and and our markdowns are like super strong they mm -hmm. can um you can you can use those to generate presentations and whatnot yeah. So I, I have used them a lot when, you know, I'm working on short-term projects where, you know, you can um, like write, you can have your narrative, you can run all your code there. You can also sometimes pick and choose what you, like, you know, something like a, you, you probably did a bigger analysis, but you don't want your, your meeting, stakeholder meetings to have all of it. So you can maybe just, you know, remove those chunks or do eval equal to false for those and only show things that you want them to see. And so, I mean, that's like, you know, to, to answer your previous situation where uh, you were presenting and things were yeah. not most updated. So at least for that scenario, this uh, R Markdown solution has also worked for me that, you know, if I'm making sure that I, I run it 
just before showing them or maybe sometimes I, you know, like literally just render it right then. Uh, that way, you know, you're making, you're ensuring that it's, everything is latest, you know, the data that you have is latest, except the situation where, you know, uh, you know, you might be working with the big data and if you render in front of them, then you're like, okay, <laughs> I don't even have the presentation. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I think but our markdown is really a strong um, tool, tool get to work with. I, I use it a lot, like even for, uh, from from the point I've learned that you can make presentations with it, uh, mm -hmm. I use it as much as I can. Uh -huh, I see. Yeah, I I also am a, I'm a big fan of uh, our markdown, and I hope that I make the the pilgrimage to Quattro. Uh, I yeah. saw you I saw you presenting last time, like using Quattro slides. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, now now I'm that I'm done with Target, let's focus on Quattro. So my next target is this Quattro. So to learn quadrature. So yeah, yeah. Uh, something that I would like to to end with, which I wouldn't go any further into, is beside all of the advantages and the bros of targets that we have discussed so far, one of the most attractive thing about target is the documentation that available and tutorials that are available uh, for the package. There is also I found this something called target to targetopia. So here, so it's a, can, can you see the browser? Uh -huh, I can, yeah. yeah. Yeah, So there's something called like Targetopia, which is an R package ecosystem for democratizing reproducible pipelines at scale. Okay, so basically it, it seems that, uh, it's like the tidyverse of targets, <laughs> something no. like this. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. So as you can see that, uh, with with a very with this chapter with maybe 10 15 minutes i was able to get up and running with targets but there is plenty still to explore and to expand and learn mm. more yeah yeah so yeah and with this i think uh, i I'm, I'm done for this meeting so okay sounds good and thank you so much i think this has been an amazing discussion. I am so glad I joined. Um, yeah, this is this sounds super useful. I'll try uh, to see if, you know how soon I can include this in my workflow. Yeah. Th thank you for showing up. I was I was a bit worried that nobody would show up to today, and yeah, especially because I also I'm I'm very busy these days and with my PhD. And I thought that okay, but I still have to free some time for the book club. So yeah. thanks for the opportunity and showing up so that I could uh, push myself and learn these new tools. No, my my pleasure, and uh, I'm I'm so glad we did finally finish this up before the daylight saving madness. <laughs> yeah, uh, great. Okay. So yeah, I will I will. Uh, round up for this meeting today and hopefully I can see you in a, one of the Everyone. tens or hundreds of other book clubs available. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Great. Thanks. It was a pleasure to discuss with you. Yeah. Same here. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.